All right. Well, good afternoon. Um, my name is Kelly. And I'm here from Seton Center, and I am here with Mr. Uh, Filson, and you are from League of Women Voters. Right. I am the uh, uh, chair of voter services for the, for the uh, Frederick County League of Women Voters. So, uh, and I also uh, sit uh, as the league representative in the Board of Elections on their board. Uh, and I've been very busy lately picking up uh, ballots from the drop boxes. So I know a lot about the drop boxes. All right, well, we're very excited for you to share your expertise with us. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Um, would you mind just quickly, for those people who don't know, sharing a little bit about what League of Women Voters is? Well, would you mind? I'm in Mary Beth. My wife is also a member, and uh, she is working with the National League, and they have done some quite a bit of work on, on the history of the League of Women Voters. So uh, it, it's worthwhile hearing it. Uh, uh, it's really a neat organization uh, and has a bunch of very, very uh, strong, intelligent women in it. And men, I might add. Oh, a few men. <laughs> How do you do? Thank you so much for being here and sharing with us today. We really appreciate it. Not at all. Just briefly, the League of Women Voters is 100 years old. I know we don't look that old, but <laughs> we are. We're a 100-year-old organization uh, that was founded, of course, for the anniversary of, of women's suffrage, which is 100 years ago, in order to educate women, particularly on the issues, they had never voted before, and so they didn't know how. Uh, and we caught on very quickly. And so now our advocacy is for voters' rights, for educating voters um, so that they know the issues. We are totally nonpartisan. We are not for profit. And our motto is empowering voters and defending democracy. And we actually take that very seriously. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. We're so excited that you are taking that seriously and sharing some information with us. And even though you've been around a hundred years, that's really impressive. Um, I know that we have a lot of people who have sent us some questions, particularly about 2020. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I, that came up several times are people asking um, if they are too late to register to vote in the 2020 election at this point. And the answer to that is no. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure if they can go on online and register, but Maryland is a state that has uh, in voting day registration. In fact, they could go now to one of the early voting, voting polling places and they can register and vote in the same process. They will sit them down and they'll verify and they'll register them and then they go vote. So is there something in particular that someone would need to have with them to go do that? Your ID. You, you would need some form of identification. Usually if you've got a driver's license, that'll work. If you don't have a driver's license, uh, if you've got uh, a social security card, okay. uh, it, you something that has your current um, uh, address on. Correct. If if I may clarify, um, your if your social security information, for example, your Medicare check or deposit something that has your current address on it to prove okay. that you're a citizen of Maryland, okay. a, a resident of, of Maryland. And so that could be a utility bill, um, a bank statement, anything that has your current residency in it that shows you are a Maryland resident. Okay, thank you. Um, so they, and they can, yeah, they can do that up until and including November the 3rd. Wow, good to know. And that's not the same in every state, I take it. No, no, it, no, it totally is not. And it's only for in-person voting. Okay. You can't, you can't do it remotely. Okay. Um, so that brings me to the next question, I guess. Uh, there are a lot of different options, it seems, this year for voting. Um, 
what are all those options and how can someone take advantage of them? Well, you, you, have an, you can go to online. Uh, I think my wife took advantage of that. Uh, there's an online ballot. You can, you can sign up for that. There is a, a vote uh, by mail. Uh, there's early voting. Uh, and then there's voting on election day. So all those options are available. And if you vote by mail, you can either send your ballot in by mail, or you can take that ballot, uh, put it in the envelope, follow the instructions carefully. And that, I'll reiterate that a couple of times. There are very specific instructions. People have to sign the ballot. They have to, when you're, and you're supposed to put the date uh, that you sign it on the envelope. And then you, it has a security flap that you turn over and seal it. But those are things that need to be done. And it's kind of just like follow the directions. Okay. Okay. So very specifically follow the directions that are included with your mail-in ballot. Yeah. Okay. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Um, and so was there, is there a cutoff date for the mail-in ballot? Was, and has that already Well, the, the, there was the, the cutoff date for the mail-in ballot to request one was the 20th of... Uh, 13th. Is it? It's already passed. It's passed. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. To request an absentee ballot, unlike in the primaries in which all Maryland registered voters were sent a ballot, that was for the primaries. But for the general election, um, it, the decision was made that you had to apply for the absentee ballot. Okay. And so that deadline has already passed. Okay. But if you applied for it and you have not sent it in, then you can fill it out, uh, drop it off at any of the drop boxes or uh, obviously at the polling stations. Okay. Okay, and they can do that up until November the 3rd, correct? Correct. Okay. Absolutely. 8, 8 p.m. on November the 3rd for the drop boxes. For the drop boxes. Okay. Right. Thank you. Um, with the mail-in ballots, a couple of people um, had asked, how safe is their ballot when they vote by mail? It, well, all right, let, let's, when you vote by mail, as far as safety, it is safe. The, the area where I would, I guess, raise caution is, is the, the tardiness of, of the Postal Service. Uh, there was just something that the, the Postal Service it used to be they process mail a lot faster. Uh, the re and the requirement is that your ballot be received or be postmarked by election day, be postmarked by um, November the 3rd. So how quickly the post office moves that, your, your ballot, it could not make November the third. So it's not. But again, it's not a. It's not an issue of safety. It's just a timeliness, a timeliness issue of how quickly it moves. Uh, I heard something today in some states where uh, they have said today is the day, last day that to mail your ballot that they feel they can guarantee it will arrive on time, be postmarked by November the 3rd. Okay. But it's, again, it's not a safety issue. It's just a timeliness. Okay. So if someone was concerned about the timeliness um, and they wanted to use one of the drop boxes, um, mm -hmm. could you tell us some of the locations in Frederick County where someone could find one? Uh, there at uh, Kentuckton High School. Okay. Middletown. Uh, there is a, uh, 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 the, um, uh, yeah, all right, all right, my wife has got the, so the actual location, I can send this there to you, <laughs> um, it's the Frederick County Board of Elections office on uh, Montague Avenue, Brunswick Middle School, okay. uh, Kentuckton High School, uh, Governor Thomas Johnson High School, um, Urbana Regional uh, Library, 
the William R. Talley Recreation Center that's in downtown Frederick, Oakdale High School in Imesville, and then the Middletown VFW Activities Building uh, in Middletown. Okay. But the closest one to Emmitsville would be Concocton High School. Okay, so for our northern Frederick County people, the Catoctin High School probably right. The, the, the nearest closest one is probably uh, uh, you know uh, TJ High School in in Frederick. But okay. So for us in North County, Catoctin High School and Thurmont is yeah. Catoctin. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um. So if somebody has questions or concerns about how best to, you know, if they're confused about their mail-in ballot. Um, you said they're very specific instructions. Are they, is there anyone in particular that they could contact for help? Well, they have uh, on your absent or your mail-in ballot, there's play, you could have someone help you. Okay. And there's a place for that person to, to sign an, an affidavit that I have helped Mary Brown fill this out and it asks you, you know, the relationship to, to Mary Brown. So they can do that. The person who helps them needs to sign the affidavit, affidavit on the ballot that they assisted them. Okay, but that could be anyone. So for instance, like yes. if somebody had yes. concerns and they came in to see us case managers here at Seton Center, we could help them. Yes. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. I think that'll probably put a lot of people's minds at ease. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and you already answered the question about states that some people had, um, but someone asked about early voting. Is there anything in particular that you have to do to be eligible for early voting? No, no. It, 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 I mean, early voting is different from absentee voting, and it used to be absentee uh, voting, you need to have a legitimate reason like i'm going to be on a trip i'm going to be out of the country right but maryland like a number of states has, has removed that and anybody can do early voting or you know vote by mail mm -hmm. uh, that's just an option that is now available okay. to make it easier for people to vote so, and so that is new and different this this election cycle I think there are more places that you can do early voting in mm -hmm. this cycle because some of the places that would traditionally be used uh, for early voting are now used for other issues like uh, one of the places uh, is distributing food for seniors and so we couldn't use that so they have to use uh, oh. different places to go for early voting. I'm sorry, that's my cat screaming in the background. <laughs> um, but it would be just the same as if you were voting on election day. Uh, you go in, they check your name against the rolls to show that you are a registered voter in the state of Maryland. Um, they give you your ballot, you fill it in and hand it to her and it's scanned and you walk out with your I voted today sticker. Awesome. I mean, that's just one, 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 one of the ways that Maryland is trying to, to make it easier for people to vote and, and uh, uh, trying to raise, the, the, you know, the participation of people voting. I hope that it works. I hope that people do participate more. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> so far, it's looking good. <laughs> All right. Um, so another question that um, was asked, and you touched on this a little bit. Um, if someone is already a registered voter um, and they're not going to register for the first time today, do they need an ID to vote? No. Because they're on the rolls. Okay. So if you're on the rolls and you're already a registered voter, you do not need to bring your ID with you. No. That is correct. They will ask you your name uh, and your address and you can provide your driver's license, you know, if you want to, in order to, you know, if you've got a weird spelling place or name or something like that, you can hand it to you, to the uh, polling judge and they will accept it, but it is not necessary. You well, simply have to answer your name, address, 
and your the month and the day of your birth. Yeah, the, the polling judge cannot ask for an ID. Okay. Um, and so this this next question is actually mine um, because I rely on the League of Women Voters a lot for your uh, voter registration guide. So yeah. I was wondering if you could tell us what a good reliable source is to find out information about who's running for office in our area and tell us a little bit about your materials. Vote 411. No, go ahead. That's right. Uh, no, dear, I'm not trying to steal you. No, no. <laughs> Vote 411 is the uh, 2020 election guide online. Okay. And so you just go online, uh, www.vote411.org, uh, and it will ask you what state you're in and then you know, what county and so forth. Um, and you can access then all of the people and the issues that are on your ballot that you will be voting for, which is pretty cool. Yeah. It's available in English and in Spanish. Um, and we do not endorse or uh, give recommendations for any candidate or any, issue. or any party in any election. We will give you the answers that the candidates themselves gave to the questions which are universal for all the candidates running for that particular office. They're given the same questions and we publish their answers verbatim. We don't correct their grammar, we don't put punctuation, we do it exactly as it was sent to us. And as far as the issues, uh, we go by what is on the, the ballot that's given to us by the Board of Elections in this instance, there were so many requests for the pros and cons to some of the issues that we actually went back and developed those and put those online. They're not in the printed issue, but they're on the Vote 411 online issue. Okay. Thank you. That's very helpful um, because I do know in particular in Frederick County, there are uh, at least two statewide and countywide questions that are on the ballot for correct mm -hmm. okay for our area so if somebody has questions on what those are they could see your vote 411 guide and i would explain yes that. that's correct okay because yep. somebody did um ask about those questions and i guess that they had some misunderstanding about what right. was on the ballot right right yeah. okay thank you so that would be very helpful to them if they can go look that up um, someone has expressed some concern about being harassed at polling places. They're a little bit afraid that that might happen. Um, so could you explain maybe like what some of their rights are, what they can expect? Well, uh, because of this election, I mean, there are uh, line judges that are that are up walking up and down if there's a line to go vote there's there are two judges at the door and there is uh there also is a line judge who's walking up and down the line those judges part of their duties are to, to look at activities so if uh, someone is is harassing somebody uh they will have them removed from the area and that could be depending you know how they'll be politely asked and if, if there's it escalates then they'll call call the police and have the person removed there is no uh campaigning or electioneering within a hundred feet of the polling place so uh their that's their job to watch out and make sure that doesn't happen um i think correct me mary beth if someone has a a t-shirt mm -hmm. for a candidate they can wear that but they can't carry any um signs or, or place cards for example within 100 feet within 100 feet there was a, a young lady yesterday who was carrying a trump flag and she was in line uh within 100 feet of the polling place she was asked to, to roll up the sign and put it away so 
that is taken very seriously. It is absolutely yeah, very is. seriously. Yeah. Uh, there can be no campaign literature uh, left on the polling places. That's strictly uh, forbidden. And it is also an offense to impede anyone path to get to the voting place. Uh, even if you're standing in line, it is it is a federal offense. It's a it, felony. Yeah, it's a felony to impede someone from voting. Okay, that's that's important for people to know. Okay, thank you. So, yeah. And, and there, yeah, it's serious. We take it seriously. And again, depending on the polling place and activity, there are at least one, and in some cases, two judges that are moving up and down the line to observe people in line, answer questions, or keep people feeling comfortable. Okay, thank you. That, that's probably going to relieve some anxiety there. That's good to know. Um, somebody asked if it was better to vote early or on election day. Is one better than the other? You know, <laughs> it's it, not better. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it's when you want to and when you think the lines are going to be better. For example, uh, Yesterday, the lines were long, all, all four locations. Um, and they were over two hours in Urbana. They're over two hours in Urbana today. Um, they were probably an hour yesterday in Middletown. I, and I saw this. Um, and today at Middletown, it was about a 15 minute. And at, at Kentucky in high school, it was moving pretty pretty quickly. They had a had a large number of voting machines, so they could meet, move people through fairly quickly. So logic would say, you know, people are going to go try and vote early. So maybe as you toward the end of the early voting might be better. And then there's going to be a lot of people who are probably going to wait, want to vote on election day. So and I expect the lines to be long. Okay. All right. Just as, as an FYI, usually first thing in the morning and like at, at 8 a.m. when the, or 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. when the polls open, it's very busy. Uh, then again, when people get off work, you know, 4.30 to 7, uh, 8, it is very busy at those times. And so you can just sort of gauge uh, when the lines may be shorter. You know, okay. it'll, it'll depend upon the mood, but uh, the only problem with voting on election day is the chance that the lines could be very long, the weather could be bad, you know, and you'll be standing out in the soaking rain for three hours or something of that nature. Okay. Um, that's, that's a chance you have to take. Yeah. Now, I'll, I saw you had a question, and I'll add this here. If there is somebody who through a, a handicap cannot stand in the lines they 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 can't be outside they somebody can go with them and they can that person can go up to the the judge and say i have a person who uh is unable to stand in line they will come out to the car where that person is with voting material and that person will be able to vote from that location. And then the poll judge will take the vote inside and it'll be recorded. Okay, so that person doesn't have to bring any like documentation or anything with them to prove that they are not able to do that? Okay. Right. Yeah. Good. That's really good to know, thank you. Um, so with all the different voting methods this year, um, are there any word as to when the results will be final? When we'll know what the results are? Uh, uh, they, it, 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 it kind of, it, it depends. Uh, I mean, at the, our board of elections, and, and it, uh, they're already canvassing, which is counting. They're already ca uh, counting the mail-in ballots that they have now. So they have those. They, they will have all the votes, the, 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 results from early voting and, and on election day. If, if it's a landslide one way or the other, I think they'll be able to, you know, you'll be able to tell. But if it is close and understand 
Frederick County is split Republican Democrat by I think a, a hundred votes literally and and then there's another group of uh, independents uh, so unaffiliated, unaffiliated. Uh, so it just depends on on the voting and, and how people are going to vote uh, if if it's close it's going to take some while they, they're going to have to be able to count all the votes if it's a landslide then the votes done might you know be enough to say okay you're past the margin and we can make a de declaration but there's no hard and fast day as to when these have to be. No, counted. there's no hard and fast. It's as quickly as they can count the votes. They want okay. it done as quickly as possible. Right. And as, as Jim noted, they are uh, already canvassing the mail, the mail in ballots. Uh, and you can go online and check the status of your ballot. It will show that it is received, which means, okay, they're, they've logged it. They've, they've received it by the certain date and then once they have counted it it goes to accepted or if there was a problem with it then it will indicate what the problem was your signature didn't match or you forgot to sign something and so you can then go into uh, the board of elections and correct that and have your vote counted and so it's always a good idea i check my ballot daily uh, to see its status. And so that's that's a helpful thing just in case there is some problem with it, you can correct it and still have your vote counted. Right, okay. So um, that does answer someone's question that they'll know if their ballot is rejected by going and checking the online tracking. Correct. Well, even, even more so that uh, the Board of Elections will, will contact you. Oh, okay. Uh, I know a lot of people, for example, that one thing they do is, and I'm sure people have heard it, they, they match your signature to the your signature uh, that DMV has. Well, as we get older, our handwriting changes. So it's possible that, that some, the, the signature may not match. They're very lenient on that. And if it doesn't match, there is actually a process called a, a cure process, a curing meat, C-U-R-E. And, and what they do is they contact you and they, they say, you know, your, your signature didn't match. We couldn't validate it. Will you either send us a affidavit with your signature or you can come in and provide a copy of your, your, your signature? So they go to great lengths to make sure that your vote counts. There's just never a, oh, I don't like this signature a match, and it goes into the rejected pile. Okay. There is, in every case, there is an effort to contact the voter and correct the error. Okay, so as long as it gets received, they will make it an effort to contact. They, they make it, Absolutely. yes. Every effort. Every effort okay. to make sure that it's counted. Okay, I think that's gonna relieve a lot of fears too, thank you. Um, so say someone did request a mail-in ballot um, and for whatever reason they decided they wanted to vote in person. Is that possible? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All they have to do is go in to vote in person. Now what will happen, they're going to go, they're gonna go and, and check in and it's going to say, oh, well, you've already requested a mail-in ballot. And then that person say, but I, I want to vote in person. They will end up voting a provisional ballot because and, and they have to do that because that's the check to make sure that that person didn't do really do their mail-in ballot and they're coming in to try and vote a second time okay. so it's sort of a check uh, provisional ballots people get concerned about them because they are counted last but they are counted, counted. it's just that they are counted last they're counted once they can make the check that there is not another ballot that was cast by that name. Okay. If they have the absentee ballot with them, it's a really good idea for them to bring it in and say, hey, 
here is the absentee ballot that I applied for, but for whatever reason, I decided I was more comfortable voting in person. And that then, you know, you may not even have to vote provisionally at that point. Okay. Um, because you have the ballot there and you can show that it was not mailed in. Okay. That was another question was what is a provisional ballot? So I think you just defined that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. okay. If there was any question about it, um, your addresses don't match uh, because you just moved and you forgot to change it on your voter registration, you know, things like that, then you will vote provisionally. And as Jim said, it will be counted. It just will not be counted until November the 12th. They start counting the provisional ballots. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing with the provisional ballot, they will not deny anybody the opportunity to vote. They, they, there will never be a case when they, somebody will say, you can't vote. We don't have your address. We don't have this. You always have the option of voting a provisional ballot. And then that just, they then put it aside and they do all the checks and to validate it and then the it's counted okay. as long as you're a legitimate registered voter okay so as long as you're a registered voter there should be no reason why it would be turned away it's right. just you might have to vote provisionally i mean you okay. could have a right you could have a wrong address your last name might be different than on you got married you forgot to change, change your it. name all they have to do they shouldn't have to do it is say i want to vote a provisional ballot all right. And then the, you can vote, and all the all the errors will be validated and corrected, and then the ballot counts. Okay, thank you. Um, so, if someone does want to vote in person, um, I guess there were some concerns that with COVID there might be some changes about where their polling place is. How do they find out where they're supposed to vote? They can vote anywhere. Yeah, in in. in in this situation with the COVID-19, and it's probably going to be like this from now on. It used to be you had a polling place and you had to go to that polling place. For this, no more. You can go to any one of the, the uh, polling places, uh, any one of the early voting centers, and, and you can vote. Okay, so, but do you, this might be a silly question, but do you have to say in the county that you live in? Oh, uh, yes. yes. Okay. But they yeah. can go anywhere in the county that they live in. Right. Correct. Right. Right. Okay. Because um, I do know that there are a couple of polling places traditionally that people were used to going and now that they, they can't, um, particularly well, in those our area. Yeah, those polling places will probably, I mean, it used to be in Frederick County, there were, I think, almost 90 polling places. Mm -hmm. And there are only going to be 11. Okay. Okay, so, but they could go to any one of those 11. Correct? Any one of those 11. Okay. Um, and again, for us, the closest location is probably going to be Catoctin High School. Yeah. In Northern Frederick County. I would imagine, yeah. Um, and you had mentioned earlier that if, um, that there would be the election judges there, but what should someone do if somebody does try to prevent them from voting? I would tell, tell one of the election judges. Yeah. And, and it is their job and, to. And, and they correct. then. That's that, their job. That's their job. Let them take care of it. Okay. Thank you. We don't need a, a little old lady trying to <laughs> strong arm some big guy or something. Right. Advice of, Although we're perfectly capable of doing that, you understand. <laughs> of course. Um, can someone's voter registration become inactive if they haven't participated in a while? Uh, in no, some states. In some states, uh, they will, I don't know what names they, they can either purge the rolls or they, you know, if somebody hasn't voted in 10 elections and they, they might go through and uh, purge the rolls, but when they do that, they're supposed to contact the people and 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 say you haven't voted in the past ten elections. You want to remain remain in the rolls, 
Uh, sometimes it's hard if the people haven't kept their addresses current. And, but uh, some states will just purge and not even try to contact. But uh, Maryland is not Maryland one of those is states. not one of those states. Again, we live in a, a fairly progressive state uh, in terms of voter participation. Maryland does a lot of things to make sure that uh, residents of the state have the opportunity to vote. We moved from a different state four years ago, so we thought we'd died and gone to heaven when we moved to Maryland because okay. it, it was so nice. Uh, you're automatically registered to vote when you get your driver's license. You have to opt out and say, okay. I do not want to be registered to vote when you get your driver's license now. Um, and so they make it incredibly easy to register to vote uh, and to vote. Okay, so it could be possible that someone is registered and doesn't even realize that they are if they never, if they got a driver's license but never unregistered. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Right. Okay. How could someone find out if they are registered or not? Oh, uh, that's such a good question. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, dear. <laughs> the, the easiest way is go to, uh, you have to be a little bit computer savvy, but I'm sure you could assist them. Go to the, the State Board of Elections site. And if you look at it, there will be a, uh, a uh, you'll see, am I registered? And, and you'll be able to go on and enter their name and some certain information and they can, they'll look, look it up and say, yes, you're registered. No, you're not. You can, you don't even have to input it. You can, you know, Google or use your search engine and just say, you know, Maryland elections and it will pull it up and there's a drop down menu for it. Uh, check my voter registration and you click on that and it will tell you uh, the information, the address, your party affiliation, if you have indicated one. Um, and as we said, this, this status of your in mail in ballot, if you have mailed it in. Oh. But definitely will tell you your, your voter registration status and the address okay. that is online for you. All right, well, that's exciting to know. Thank you. It is. <laughs> um, now, you had said that someone could sign that affidavit for the mail-in ballot if they needed assistance. But what if someone feels like they need assistance um, actually voting in person. Are they allowed to bring someone in with them? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And if they have uh, hearing issues, uh, sight issues, anything like that, there's a special uh, accommodation for them. Uh, and there are earphones that you can put on if you're hard of hearing or something, or if you have vision problems. And there are people there to assist you with that at all times, anytime the uh, polling place is open. Okay, and you don't need any kind of documentation to say you need those accommodations. Nope. You just ask. Just ask. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, is there anything in particular that, uh, if no, if someone's never voted before, that is allowed in the polling place, or that they're not allowed to bring in with them? You can take a sample ballot in with you. You can. Uh, and, you know, you, you could take a sample ballot. It's pre-marked uh, and use that as, as a guide. Okay. And then the only, re only requirement is you take it out with you. Do you, you know, you don't leave it there. Okay. Um, and where could someone find that sample ballot? If they you can uh, go to vote 411 on your computer and print out your sample ballot. Uh, I believe you can request one, can you not, at the polling place? I think you can, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can uh, there, but definitely at Vote 411, it will, it will tell you all of the issues and all of the candidates that you'll be voting for. Okay, thank you. Um, you just cannot question. bring any, I'm sorry, you can't bring any candidate literature into the polling place. Okay. Because that would be campaigning okay. in, in, within the polling but, place. But you could bring in a sample ballot that Correct. you filled out. Correct. Okay, that you filled out ahead of time. Um, right. 
So what happens if someone hands you a bunch of those materials as you're walking in? You're not allowed to take those in with you? No. no. Okay. Um, so and they have to stay 100 feet from the entrance to the polling place in order to do that to begin with. Okay, so if someone's handing you literature in line 100 feet, you should not take that in with you. Or put it in your purse. Put it you in your know, purse. Or stick it, it in your pocket. pocket or something. Near just, a trash just, receptacle. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Whichever, you know, okay. whatever your preference is. Okay. Uh, the, the main thing is you don't leave it in the, the polling place or in your voting booth. Okay. Uh, that's, that's what they're, they're concerned about because then that would be campaigning. All right. Um, so if someone gets sick, say on November 3rd, and they were planning to vote in person, do they have a backup option? Yes, they do. Uh, you can um, either appoint, you can, you can, uh, well, let me see, where is it here? I'm waiting to hear this yeah. myself. You have the ability to appoint somebody as an agent. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, and this is used in uh, in hospitals where you have people in ICU or or that obviously can't go. Uh, they're able to uh, appoint somebody as as an agent to, okay. to to vote for them, and and you could do the same thing. And how, what is the process for that? Do you know? There, you, you uh, would request from the Board of Elections a form. They have a, they have a, uh, uh, an agent form. And it basically uh, gets the, the voter ID and, and then the agent fills it in. Um, and it it's, amounts to kind of like a certificate of, uh, of assistance. Okay, but shouldn't you? Wouldn't you need to do that before election day? Yeah, that that would be something that if somebody knows now that they're not going to be able to go, okay, and and wants to yeah. vote, call the board of elections and explain the situation, okay. and they can provide the forms. Okay. Um. So I guess the last question would be, obviously, most people realize that this is a presidential election year for the United States, um, but there are some other offices up for election this November. Right. Right. Um, could you tell us what offices those are in Frederick County? Well, in Frederick, there are the uh, six congressional district uh, and also the eighth congressional district. Um, the sixth district is Jamie Raskin and Mr. Cole. Cole uh, and a the eighth is Mr. Trone and Mr. Parrott, I believe. Um, or is it not right? And there, then there is a the board of elections. Board of election. There are eight candidates for that. Um, pick three. Pick three. <laughs> pick okay. three. Um, and if, if somebody would want to, we did a online Zoom form for the Board of Elections. If you go to the, uh, the Frederick County's League of Women Voters Facebook site, those uh, Zoom forms are on there and they could, somebody could watch the candidates. Uh, it, it was fairly good. It was really interesting. It was, we asked a lot of really pertinent questions, you know, about getting kids back in school, what should be the focus of the Board of Education. Uh, and I, I, candidates were good answers. We also did a forum for both uh, the 6th and the 8th. So, and those, those are on the website also. So, because, because of the COVID, I mean, there hasn't been much exposure of the candidates uh, right. to the public. Right. So, that's so when you, you see your ballot, uh, the things that you will be voting, which you can vote for, you don't have to vote for all of the people that are, are running, even if no one is running against them. 
you know, your vote will still be counted for those that you do vote for. Okay. But the, the things that you can vote for would, of course, be president and vice president, uh, including third party candidates, uh, U.S. representative for Congress from District 6, uh, U.S. representative in Congress for District 8, uh, some judicial offices, county circuit court, judge, uh, special court of appeals, and court of special appeals for which there is only one candidate running okay. in his positions. Uh, and then the Board of Education candidates. Uh, so those are the individual ones. And then the state ballot questions, there are two of those. And then the local ballot questions, there are two of those. Okay. Um, and so again, if someone only wants to vote for the President of the United States, but they don't feel that they want to vote for anything else, if they, they can just leave the rest of that ballot blank and it's still counted. Yep, correct. Yep, okay. their vote for president and vice president will count. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you want Frederick County voters to know? Can I say something? Please. Sure, thank you. <laughs> Do I have a choice? <laughs> <laughs> Please uh, pay attention to the down ballot issues. The Board of Education, for example, uh, is is critically important. People take these things for granted, I think, a lot. Uh, and there was a recent poll in the Frederick News Post that said 25% of people answering the poll did not understand the down ballot issues. Uh, for example, the, the positions of the Board of Education. And I think we all can understand now more than ever before just how important those individuals are. Not only if you have children in school, of course, because the Board of Education uh, directs whether your children go back to school or not, whether they play in sports or not. I mean, they have tremendous uh, impact on all of that. But just think about the quality of schools and whether the individuals running for the Board of Elections advocate uh, what you feel passionate about as far as what should be in schools. And this will direct the quality of the schools. And since we just we moved here four years ago, I distinctly remember always looking at the ranking of the schools mm -hmm. on the websites for the realtors, right. because that determines your home value, uh, your resale value, whether people want to move to a particular area or not. Um, and that, of course, drives a lot of other things, businesses and employment and all of that. So please don't underestimate the impact for your local community that your down ballot issues have. Okay, thank you. I mean, I probably, I guess some people don't realize that your school board levies taxes as well. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Well, thank you so much. That's very helpful information. Um, anything else that you want Frederick County voters to know? Well, I guess vote. vote. Get out and vote. Make your, <laughs> send in your absentee ballot. There are, I think, 40, 42,000, I think, or some tens of thousands of absentee ballots that have not been returned yet. And so please, you know, get those in the nearest drop box if you possibly can, uh, as, as soon as you can. And if not, please get out and vote. Yeah. Your, your vote makes a difference. As someone said, you know, complaining can't change anything, but a vote can. So... There is an interesting PowerPoint presentation on the League of Women Voters website. If you go to Elections 2020 on the League of Women Voters of Frederick County website, there is an interesting PowerPoint presentation of why vote and just how important your vote is. Um, and so I would strongly recommend anybody that has any questions about the impact of their vote uh, to please go and, and look at that. And I think it will be very enlightening to you to understand the tremendous impact 
that every vote has. Um, and would it be okay if um, Peyton Center was able to share a link to that on our social media site? Uh, you just, yeah, just go, to, absolutely, sure. It's, it's open to the public. Uh, you can just go to, in fact, we download, can we download it? We can download it and send it to you. Well, the, the as a matter of fact, yeah. why don't we just do that? Well, it might be, it might be easier just for her to, the link to the Facebook page. Thank you. Yeah, either way, I will find it and I will share the link. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. And if it's okay, we'll go ahead and share it with the recording of this Zoom session so that people can yeah. easily access it. Sure. Well, thank you both so much for your time. This was very informative. Um, and is, is there anything else that you would like to share with us today before we... I think that is probably all we... <laughs> okay. Hopefully we haven't overwhelmed you, but, but I mean, the biggest no, thing wonderful. is the, the, the county, uh, well, the county, the state, Maryland really has gone to great lengths to ensure that, that you and, and, and I and everyone else has the opportunity to vote. And um, I just encourage people to take that opportunity and, and uh, act on it. The, uh, it being the centennial of women's suffrage, uh, we think it important to honor all of the sacrifices that the women and men made so that we have the right to vote. And if you're not going to do it to honor their legacy and all the, that they went through to provide this for you, then do it for yourself because you're the only one that can control the direction of your town, uh, your state, and your nation. There's, there's an old, old poem um, about the want of a horseshoe nail, you know, that the horse died because the horse was killed because it didn't have a shoe, because it didn't have a nail, and because of that, the, the soldier died, and because of the soldier, the battle was lost, and because of the battle, the war was lost, and because of the war, the kingdom was lost, all because of a horseshoe nail. And there was an interesting post uh, that I saw online recently that said, you are the voter of this in this precinct. One vote can determine the direction that the precinct goes. As the precinct goes, so goes the county. As the county goes, so goes the state. As the state goes, so goes the nation. And you have only to look at our adjacent state in Virginia, where someone for their House of Burgess, I believe they call it, the House of Representatives, was a dead tie. They recounted it, and it was exactly the same number of votes. And because of that, they pulled one of the two names out tossed of the hat. Coin. Yeah, they tossed a coin. Now that's not the way you want your democracy to work with a coin no. top. And because of that one vote that was not given, the person who won the toss uh, was the person who then gave the majority to their party in the House of Representatives in Virginia. And so never ever let anybody tell you that one vote does not make a difference. Thank you so much for your time. That was wonderful. It was lovely to talk to you both. Um, and we'll definitely share this with our sphere of influence. And I will share this recording so you can share it with your sphere of influence. And um, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.